Hello everyone, this is Blake, or it's DB71, back at you to talk about what you hear in the background here. Chris McGregor's Brotherhood of Breath. Listen to this, and then I'll talk about it a little bit. Once you pay attention to something that I've uh, will come back to. This is kind of a big band or medium sized band arrangement of uh, great musicians. Uh, but one of the things is that I've learned uh, through my reading and through help of mentors like Mr. Mike Johnson, um, there's a very call and response kind of uh, musical technique or, or just kind of a natural thing with a lot of South African music. And there's a lot of that in here and it sounds fantastic, especially when listening through headphones because we've got a group of horns playing over here and then they'll play a phrase which will be ended by another group of horns on the other side and, and to hear that on the sound stage through your headphones is amazing I mean it sounds great you hear them doing it now Aha. well anyway let me tell you a little bit about Chris McGregor and uh, the Blue Notes and the Brotherhood of Breath Turn this down just a little bit. So, mm, four, maybe three or four, maybe five months ago, uh, listening to one of uh, Mike Johnson's Destination Out shows, and he did, he played a little bit of South African music. And I was somewhat familiar with uh, Dollar Brand, um, uh, Hugh Michaela, uh, and I had heard the name of Johnny Diani, but I didn't quite know where he fit in the framework of things. But it turns out that uh, Chris McGregor, this cat, uh, born in South Africa, uh, basically grew up and was uh, raised uh, in black communities. and. Uh, very, very uh, into music as, as, a, as a youngster. And, and by the way, I learned a lot of this stuff from Chris McGregor and the Brotherhood of Breath. Uh, kind of a biography. It was written by McGregor's wife, Maxine McGregor, uh, I think in the late 80s. Uh, oh, no, actually published in 95 by uh, Bamberger Books. Um, you really should get it. This is fantastic. This teaches so much, especially to me, uh, a cat that was born after all of the turmoil, racial turmoil here in uh, the United States. Uh, so a lot of apartheid and all this kind of stuff was never really taught to me in school, but it's laid out here, man, and it's it's amazingly shocking uh, that this has been allowed and quite frankly is still happening in many countries. Uh, South Africa finally broke out of it uh, in, the, in the 90s I believe. So anyway, Chris McGregor, uh, born in the 30s, grew up 40s, 50s and uh, very attracted to music. He went to music school. He, by day, he was learning, uh, you know, Stockhausen and uh, Weber and, and things like that. You know, modern classical music. And I think he was training to be uh, a, a classical composer uh, type. But at night, uh, he would go out and hear all this great uh, South African music, all the tra traditional stuff. 
And then jazz started coming over uh, via American soldiers and things like that. They would bring it over, and he was very, very interested in that. Uh, in fact, that's basically where he took off to towards. I don't know if he ever finished the the musical education that he started. Uh, anyway, he had enough, or he got finished, whatever the case may be, and started uh, several bands. The, the one of the biggest ones was called the Blue Notes. Uh, Blue Note, kind of like the record Blue Note label, but plural notes in O-T-E-S. Um, have some pictures in here. Basically, uh, a band that technically, legally, wasn't supposed to happen in South Africa. You couldn't, you couldn't mix at all. <laughs> um, here's a picture. Of course, Chris is the the one, the only white guy. But then you have um, Dudu Pukwana. Uh, let's see. Well, you can't see uh, Louis Maholo in the back on the drums. Um, and then, you know, some incarnations, I think, changed. Uh, Johnny Diani, like I said, eventually became the bass player. Um, and these guys, uh, oh, Mon Mongezi Faza um, was the other, uh, the other musician in the group. They had to leave, basically leave South Africa to get anywhere with their music because they, they weren't going to get anywhere uh, musically um, in South Africa. So they, they uh, exiled themselves to Europe, uh, England, and France uh, at various periods of time. And they, they did rather well. Um, their records are very hard to find, though. Uh, but try to find them. I wish I had some. I'm still working on getting some Blue Notes records. But you can pick up uh, some of Chris's later incarnations, which is called Brotherhood of Breath. Um, lots of performers, some original Blue Note members here, but then other names that, that you'll see uh, in other groups uh, during this 60s and 70s time period um, in many other English bands or European bands and I'll, I'll read them out to you of course there's Chris McGregor uh, Malcolm Griffiths Nick Evans on trombone Mangezi Faza uh, Mark Sherig or Cherig C-H-A-R-I-G Harry Beckett it's a big name Dudu Kukwana Ronnie Beer Alan Skidmore Harry Miller on bass on here Luis Maholo Mike Osborne, John Sermon, and that's all that's listed here. Uh, so anyway, this record was done in the early 70s, it says 71 here, uh, originally on the RCA Neon label. Um, it has been reissued recently by Stamford Audio. You can find them and get new seal copies, a reissued copy. They use the back. Uh, as the front cover now on the reissue, uh, but originally it looked like this. Um, this particular issue on a very, very flimsy uh, RCA, probably that Dynaflex era. Um, doesn't say Dynaflex, but anyway. So getting to the music, uh, very South African in American jazz and European jazz influences all together. Uh, one of the things I really like about it is that while it's spiritual in nature to me, um, it's not that kind of serious spiritual where you know you're you're thinking about life and the world and everything like that. Of course, that's in here, but the feeling that I get when I listen to a lot of South African music is that that sense of hope and jubilation and uh, I don't know this more positive sides of spiritual music than or spiritual jazz than you normally get out of the American uh, based or American originated spiritual jazz kind of music and so when I play this uh, record and I've been wearing this thing out um, I always come away with this feeling fantastic. I love this stuff. Uh, just the way that the the traditional 
African musics and or South African music forms and the jazz has been mixed together. Uh, one of uh, Chris McGregor's idols uh, was Duke Ellington, and Chris gets a chance to write out a lot of um, music, scores, compositions that he helps get his bands to play, uh, but then he allows a lot of free or improvised parts, uh, which it sounds like this is what's going on here, where we have in the background... Uh, Tell you what the name of this. The first team was M R A. This is called Davashi's Dream, and maybe well, I'll play a little bit of the Bride, which makes up side one. Anyway, it sounds like you've got a very composed foundation, and then you've got various ho solo horns just allowed to play a ballad on top of it all the way through. And it, at some points, is fantastic because you hear them just basically giving it everything they've got within the framework of something very very well laid out I feel like I'm rambling so I'll quit um, anyway uh, you know I like to read and I want to recommend get this book if you want to learn about Chris McGregor and the South African artists uh, but also there's a lot of social studies in here uh, about what I mean, the hell that was going on in South Africa at the time completely unbelievable to me um, very educational uh, written by Maxine McGregor um, Chris unfortunately passed away in his mid 50s uh, in 90 I think 1990 time frame uh, due to some medical complications man if he had was still living like we say about a lot of really really good jazz musicians just think of the things that he could still be doing uh, fantastic book uh, Chris McGregor and the Brotherhood of Breath uh, highly recommended you can find this quite easily in, in used books out but online my favorite being ABE books uh, find a copy of Chris McGregor's Brotherhood of Breath this one it is fine you can get an, an original it's not that expensive uh, but if you want new vinyl uh, Try the Stanford audio version. Uh, I bet it's you know higher quality release. It's probably 180 gram, etc. But it has this as the front cover, so don't be confused. Um, this is the third track, uh, "The Bride," uh, another Dudu Kukwana piece. Um, again, you'll hear the horns, call and response, trading back and forth, and it sounds fantastic. Uh, meanwhile, the whole time. Uh, drums are just rolling in the background, lots of percussion. Listen to this. <laughs> oh man, it's great. And then it'll trade off to a piano. Here we go, piano. Of course, Chris tears it up. Um, so, just going to take this out. Chris McGregor's Brotherhood of Breath is a new name, a new group. Blue Notes. Um, they did several releases. Uh, just want to introduce you guys to it, if you don't already know. Uh, I know uh, Anders may have picked up a copy of this. Um, go back and listen to it, man. It's great stuff. And... Uh, Good to see you guys again. We'll come back again soon with more goodies that I've been finding. Uh, hope you enjoyed this one and um, the introduction to Chris McGregor and the Brotherhood of Breath, the Blue Notes. Um, thanks for watching, everyone. Come back around next time.